Uh, so let me uh, raise another difficult topic. Uh, there are, again, no shortage of them. Uh, lots of people around the world are very much struggling for democracy, um, for freedom of expression. Uh, we're seeing that now very much in the streets in Hong Kong. Uh, in the midst of a very complicated U.S.-Chinese relationship. Uh, let me come at this from two different angles. In your book, Hard Choices, you talked about your experiences in Iran and the, and the way in which the Green Movement took off there, and that you regretted not finding a way for the United States to have a bigger voice for, for democracy. So you've got that going on the one hand. You want to do more. You have this big, complicated U.S.-Chinese relationship, and again, you more than anyone knows that the, the growth of China as a, as a rising power has led to all kinds of challenges for the United States that you, that you also write about in your book. So you've got these, this tug of war between your desire to support these uh, democratic protesters in the street and the complicated U.S.-Chinese relationship. How do you navigate that? What would you do? How do you show support uh, and engage in the long term with the Chinese? Well, look, I, I think the Chinese... Um, used to understand that part of uh, the role that the United States played in the world was to speak out for human rights and democracy. Uh, and knowing full well that there were many situations that all we could do was speak out. We weren't going to do anything else, but at least we could give a, a level of encouragement and support to the people who were in the streets or the people who were trying to make uh, the changes. And, and in, in the Iran situation, going back uh, into 2009, when there was a Green Movement uprising, we, we talked to all of the experts and the expats, the Iranian Americans, everybody we could think of, um, who said, look, we don't want the United States to speak out too much because we don't want the Iranian government to say this was a U.S.-inspired demonstration uh, because it wasn't. I mean, we're just, you know, we're demonstrating because we want more freedom. Uh, so we, we, we didn't go as far as we might ordinarily have, but we used technology in those days. We, you know, we knew that uh, a lot of the demonstrations were being planned uh, on Facebook, for example, and uh, Facebook, we found out, was going to have an outage uh, for some kind of mechanical, technical problem, and we begged them to keep it on so people could still meet. So we tried to do what we could but we, I think, maybe listened too thoughtfully to the people who said, don't, don't be too out front. But the Iranians, like the Chinese, would expect us to say, you know what, we believe in human dignity, we believe in the right of every person to um, have uh, uh, certain uh, equality and access to justice and be part of a political uh, environment in which they get to choose their leaders. So when it comes to Hong Kong, I personally think it would not cause some huge breach if the United States government were saying what they should say, mm. which is that you know people have a right to demonstrate peacefully, and we expect the Chinese government to uh, avoid uh, you know military action against their own people in the streets of Hong Kong, and and make sure we deliver that message in a in a, a couple of different ways. Instead, we hear that the president has a call with uh, Xi Jinping, and he basically says, I'm not going to say anything about Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And if you looked at pictures of the demonstrations in Hong Kong, there were lots of American flags. There were lots of statues of liberty. Uh, people were carrying quotes from Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin and George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. So certainly the predominantly young people of Hong Kong were being inspired by our own uh, history and I think it's a shame that we have retreated so far from speaking out. That doesn't mean, Mike, that you know you, you keep rubbing salt in the wounds or you sacrifice American interests uh, when you are engaged in uh, that kind of advocacy. But it, it does mean that when America is silent about these fundamental human rights, nobody else is going to speak up. Nobody else has a voice loud enough to be heard.